call this uh, meeting to order for December the 6th, 2022. Welcome, everybody. Nice, fresh evening. Result of the agenda for the December 6th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, Councillor Bobbick is off in business in Winnipeg, and uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio is uh, is away today. Result that the minutes of the November 15, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. Four. Glad to see uh, two familiar faces back in our chamber here tonight. Uh, we recognize two uh, outstanding individuals that served on council for several years. Councillor Friesen joins us tonight. She was first elected in 2002. She served for 20 years. She was first elected with Mayor McKenzie, Councillor. Uh, Bill Pott, Morris and Jishin, Harry Shodra, Kelly Neely, and Ron McRae. Uh, uh, Councillor Friesen was actively involved with many committees over those years, prior to my being here. Uh, but some of her big uh, areas where she enjoyed was Communities in Bloom and her dedicated work uh, with Canada Day. And we thank you for your service to this community. Councilor Delorier was elected in 2009 by election, and he served over 13 years. Uh, he was uh, elected with Mary McKenzie, Councilors Friesen, Bobbick, Dolman, Oberton, and White. He is pretty strong in general government negotiations and advocating uh, and working hard with uh, provincial government as well and working and assisting with a lot of the duties and responsibilities with administration. And I thank you also for your, your, uh, your time to serve on council to both of you. So tonight we have a uh, special uh, token for you and in your uh, honor, I guess, and, and serving on council. Yeah, I think we should have you maybe back here. We'll get a picture. I was going to move over. So what is up there? Oh, this You want to come over here? Well, for sure. You're going to pay for that. And one other major accomplishment that Councillor Friesen was involved with was the, the swan. Oh, wow, yeah, that is a good one. I'm, so for, I'm sorry for forgetting that. So you, uh, you two are welcome to, uh, to stay with us <laughs> here this evening. I know that you would be looking forward to that, so uh, join with us for a little while if you choose. <laughs> if not, then uh, enjoy your time and your evening with your family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck to you guys. Thank you. All right, then we'll move on to uh, communications 7.1. Result of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police email and letter dated November the 16th, invoice dated November the 19th, and contract policing monthly year to date report dated September the 30th be received. Moved by 
Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Um, on the uh, invoice, Bye. it's actually addressed to Julie Fothergill. Should we not have that updated to reflect our current CAO? Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, yeah, I think that CFO Peter could maybe remind them to change it. I'm sure that was probably something that had been requested and maybe not been fulfilled yet. And sure. I just have a couple questions with trying to understand the contracting, if I can. Um, we've talked about how we basically budgeted and we have X number of um, officers assigned to our community or area. When, like, how does our agreement work? Because in, like, with discussing the um, shared service agreements, I'm just trying to understand. So if we're, say, let's just pick a random number of eight. If we're allotted eight officers, then is that an all-inclusive in the sense that if anybody's off for medical leave or any other reason, another officer comes no. in? No, we, uh, if we have eight, if we hire eight, then that's what we have is eight. And that would have you, the staff sergeant would have to work with with whatever his detail, what he, uh, people that he has, and that would include like holidays, sickness, or even uh, maternity leave. So even short term, long term disability, we don't get another no um, officer in in their place. Right. Okay. As far as contract negotiations, that's between the uh, the province and the federal government as well if you're wondering about that. Uh, yeah, no, I was just kind of wondering because when we were, in, in some of the things we were discussing with agreements that it's kind of all inclusive, like, you know, if you're purchasing a service agreement and you're purchasing service of eight, then you get eight regardless. So that's why I was just kind of wondering okay. how, how that kind of plays in or plays out. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2, result of the Department of Municipal Relations Bulletin 2022-33 regarding MDTP COVID-19 top-up grant uh, expanded provisions uh, have been received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. It indicated that we received a grant of $10,000 for basically handyman services. Where are we with that? Has it all been spent? Do we still? So that, um, as far as that goes, Councillor, uh, sorry, Mr. Ganita can answer that, but we should probably stick to the uh, question of, of the monies. If you want to ask that, you know, to the uh, Mr. Ganita at any time you can, but uh, we'll grab the, the question right now to Mr. Ganita. Uh, when the money was first given, it was given under the condition that it be used to offset the cost of drivers to and from local vaccination appointments to waive the per kilometer charge for providing transportation services to clients to and from COVID local vaccination appointments and to offset the costs of optional personal protective equipment and the sanitizing of vehicles between trips and uh, <clears throat> in Swan River with the Swan River Handy Transit there were no trips for out of town and COVID because the COVID clinics were available in town so there was no mileage charge uh, the, the cost of sanitization was minimal and maybe no more than two hundred dollars and so uh, i had asked the mobility dis the disadvantaged transportation program people would like i can't see us spending that entire ten thousand dollars under those conditions and i'm assuming that they must have experienced the same thing with other handy van operations because they decided to expand uh, pr provisions of what you can use the money for to include operating expenses under capital needs, example, vehicle replacement modifications, repairs. And so uh, that's what we'll be using uh, 
that ten thousand dollars for is the operating ex expenses, the vehicle and repairs, and you know, expenses of operating that, and even the regular expenses because the COVID-related expenses were next to nothing. Okay, thank you, Councilor Boycha. I was just saying that it says municipalities may now use the surplus COVID-19 grant funds to offset 2022 Hansit Transit operating expenses and our capital needs. So whatever, yeah. it's not like it's going back anywhere. We right. can just use it for ongoing expenses. Exactly. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, result of the building and demolition permits 6022 through 6522 with a total estimated value of $356,300 be received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.4. Result of the request for expression of interest from Sapatoya Creation be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Powell, did you want to comment anything on that at all? Uh, on any? I think it's pretty much straightforward. It is. It, um, I think that it's just very lucrative that we um, support this. And you mean, I, I think that it's been in the paper as well. Yeah. And um, I think that I did forward it to the chamber, but um, I, I don't know, has it gone out or from the chamber at all? But yes, so let's move forward it. Councilor Medwood. I was looking at the map and I'm not familiar with the town borders. I'll be honest about that. Is that all 100% in the town borders? It is. Okay. Yeah. And just one other question. I know um, they're look, I, I read through it so I know what they're looking for, but just out of curiosity because this is, well, really good to see this economic development happen. <coughs> oh, I'm just curious to wonder if the it's been broached with either them or I'm going to apologize for probably mispronouncing this one, but the was was this was this we? It does not roll off my tongue. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying every time though. Um, both of them are kind of right across the road from each other, and I'm really happy and excited to see that. One of the things I'm wondering about is if they have considered doing residential in conjunction with. So thinking like our main street, it's commercial or retail on the main floors and then there's apartment and living space um, above because I'm just thinking that might bring, because where they're developing to, it's kind of a new, and there's not a lot of residential right right there. And if you bring residential to have those to follow areas. follow zoning bylaws. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, what is it zoned for out there, and is there the possibility, if they were interested, to change that zoning to accommodate the Well, if they did, there was a process for that, and the zoning in that area is... I believe it's commercial highway. Right. Uh, so multi-family housing would be allowed, like, if they wanted to have apartments above their uh, business, but it would be entirely up to them what they want to do with it, kind of thing. Yeah. That, no, that I understand. I'm just wondering if from um, a town or council perspective, if it's been suggested or planted a seed kind of thing, because that would also kind would, of help yeah. with that. Uh, that would be outside of this. This is more or less correspondence. If there was something that we, the committee, you know, would need to talk to with uh, other First Nations, that we would discuss that with them. This is more or less just getting some information out. And what they're looking for is, uh, you know, people that are interested in, in renting or using some of their spaces. But uh, but to answer the question, but if you're talking about residential spaces, that would be something that we would talk with them. But mainly, they 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 buy the property and they they uh, build what they see fit through a process of um, business analysis and so forth. Go ahead. Yeah, and from what I understand, like it's it's a process of um, acquiring the land and building on this. Um, they've got so many um, also monies to put towards those business development. I know from like MMP is working with them um, for Sapatoyak and yeah. to develop this. Um, as for developing um, 
living. I don't know if that's something that they plan to do at some point. Um, it also takes a long process to, to acquire TLC land. Like they have to, I, I think the plan is to at some point have this being TLC land. So that's a long waiting list as well. So I think it's just all in right now is just trying to figure out if this is feasible for them to, you know, this, this portion here. Yeah, no, I understand they're just kind of, well, seeking. Feeling, yeah. Yeah getting feelers, so that's why I'm just kind of wondering if at any point, um, I'm not sure if you're involved in it or not because I, uh, I know you were sent the email out earlier, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just wondering if anyone's kind of suggested that as a possible option as well as to blend that commercial res or retail with um, some housing. That would be a, some discussion with them. And I'll just remind uh, Councillor Medwood just to raise your hand when I want to speak. Councillor White. It's to me it's self explanatory. The purpose of the REUI is to identify organized corporations or individuals interested. If you're interested, touch base with them. If you want to do residential or we wanted to, that's they're asking for feedback from the community, and that's us as individuals or a couple. Okay. Further discussion? Go ahead. So have we sent them like a letter of support from the town of Swan River in regards to this endeavor yet? Like with the initial application of purchase of the land? Or is that something that, I mean, I think that we should probably do. We, we um, in a series of meetings that we've had mm -hmm. with uh, Chief Janai and with our administration, um, when, uh, at the acquisition of the property and also their interest in what they're building mm -hmm. that they knew that they had our support. Okay. So we didn't really have, they didn't ask us for mm -hmm. a letter of support, uh, but if they did ask us, we would definitely support them uh, in what they're, you know, looking at. So, go ahead. I, I'm not sure, but is it possible for us to send them something only because of the fact that um, MMP is like MMP has pretty much put this out there for them and stuff like that. So I think it's important that we do let them know through them because they're kind of like they're, they're helping them get this all yeah, rolling okay. and going. Yeah, so we'll put that together. Yeah, I can uh, talk with uh, uh, Mr. Poole and and with MMP and see what uh, what they want. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, where are we here? 8.1. Result of the Director of Public Works a report we received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Sorry, can I get the two names again? I was just jotting down. Uh, White and Powell. Thank you. No discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, reports. 8.3. I'll start with uh, Council Reports and I'll start with Councillor Medwood. Um, oh, Council Reports. I have not actually attended any meetings directly relating to my committees. However, I can offer a report for COPP if people want. Um, how long is the report? It's not long at all. Okay. Um, once I find it. Uh, basically, uh, I have submitted and updated our volunteer information and data into the portal system so I can share those numbers with you if you like. Um, the other thing I do need to share with Council is I have taken the time to read the Constitution, the bylaws and the policies and procedures for COPP and we cannot have non-members at our meetings just due to the confidential nature of the collaboration between the RCMP and the COPP. So if anyone other than myself or council wishes to attend the meetings, you're welcome to become a member and volunteer to help with patrols or administrative and therefore be able to attend the meetings to know what's going on. Um, aside from that, um, if you let me know, because it's Nobody's really indicated what specifically you want for information or in a report to be shared from the COPP. So, I mean, I can 
like I say, I can share the stats with regards to our volunteer hours. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure what council is looking for for a regular I, report. I don't think council was really, I think Councilor Bob can ask for some from the, from the data. So mm -hmm. if you maybe want to share that maybe in an email or something or in a call meeting, then maybe perhaps that would be the best place. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Anything further? No, that's no. all I have. Okay. Councilor Wojciech. Okay, so we have the watershed meet and greet coming up on December 16th from 10 to 4. Um, then we have the Swan Valley Planning District meeting. Our first one's going to be set up. I think it's going to end up being December 19th. It's not 100%, but that's what it looks like everybody's leaning towards. Um, live barn update with regard to the arena recreation. Uh, Brendan advises he's awaiting to hear back from live barn on a few questions that he's asked. So that's been ongoing for a little bit. Um, I did say we maybe nudge them again for the answers. Um, I did ask for a copy of the current agreement of Hockey TV, but haven't gotten that, so I'm just wondering if that's still active. I know I have the number, like the information of how much it was or whatever, but I don't know if it's still active or, or what, or if that might be causing an issue. Um, then I did have a couple of community initiatives, ideas that I've seen uh, in travels. One was uh, adopt a family, so at Christmas time or whatever, and I don't know if we could implement, obviously not for this year, but possibly for next year, and um, or adopt a senior as well. I've seen those initiatives go around, which might be a nice thing for the community to start up, and I'm wondering how to go about that. Is it something that I need to ask for a resolution here? Do we just start up a group? And well, like if, if it's, I think that if it's any monies that are being funded from the town, then we would need a resolution. But if it's going to be just a, an, a group that's uh, organized, then mm -hmm. I don't think you need to have our permission to like do that. Like maybe Chamber of Commerce or something, right? Like yeah. under that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other thing, I was just wondering if there is an employee response time for emails and phone messages. Like if we're getting stuff sent in like is there like an overall like we'll respond within 24 hours or one two business days or or how is that for the general public and stuff like that or for us i mean i like we've been good at like getting responses back but just for general public and stuff is there like an a it policy a specific time kind of thing um some days you're able to respond right that day right Sometimes it takes a couple of days if you're out at, say, like AMM or uh, MWWA or something like mm -hmm. that. But most of the time within a, a day or two. Every day. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, and then I guess the one other thing I needed to bring up just because of where I situate 10th uh, Avenue North hasn't been plowed yet. It has been done. I just drove on it. No, oh, it hasn't. Is, is it it's on the list, so it should be getting done. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering, like, emergency services on that street. I was wondering, like, I get the bus routes and stuff, but I was thinking it should be probably a little higher up on the... Yeah, that one north. got... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that one got uh, missed. missed. It was brought up to my attention. Okay. And uh, I think it's because they do ninth. Well, it's just that little... Area, yeah, yeah, it's a little too missed that one. Good. Oh. So. I'm getting the stink eye at work, so yeah. okay, I'll bring that. Up. Nobody said anything, but it's, <laughs> it's like, oh, it's kind and, of weird. And the reason why I said, uh, I was questioning that is because the other side I then. spoke and I was thinking, Ted North, you're talking in the first block. And, and uh -huh. I did bring that up today, and uh, I spoke with Mr. Rooks, and, and he said that he was going to get it, uh, they're going to get it done. So oh, I, yeah, good. I see that. Yeah. yeah. If they're doing it, if you know when they're doing it, you want to give a quick phone call, and I'll make sure anybody that is parked on the street gets off. And then there's not. Well, that'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's it for That's me. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Councillor Powell. Councillor no. No, I go in all over the place. <laughs> okay. No particular order. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we had a library meeting on, on the 30th. It went well, um, first one. And um, I think everybody everybody was able to join. Um, lots of lots of good feedback. Um, first, lots to learn regarding um, the libraries. And, um, but I think there was lots of, it was definitely good, good feedback from both, both sides. And, um, 
I think that um, they're, uh, they, they basically approved Christmas bon or their bonus to their staff, um, voted to be the new chair from the town, so that's, that's my new part there, I guess. You're the chair? Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, um, Swan Valley Interagencies, we had to postpone the meeting there, and it will be on December 19th now, so planning to take part in that. Uh, I think that um, the other thing was we were invited to the Northwest Métis Council Grand Opening, December 12th. Uh, that takes part in Dauphin at 11.30. Um, it should be a, should be a great great uh, event to take part in, and very support, we should support, support them for all the stuff they're doing. Um, I guess, and we talked about Sapatoyak already, really. Uh, I did have a homeowner contact me in regards to building a home and property in Swan River. Um, I forwarded him on to Ron Lewicki and CEO Darren Poole for information on how to proceed with that kind of, with that. Um, community Foundations been having a granting meeting and dinner this Wednesday tomorrow night, and I'll be attending as a newly elected board member for them as well. So yeah, I think that was um, I think that was it for so far. So that's tomorrow night. Yes. Because I have to attend that. So yes. yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. Yes. <laughs> and that's everything. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Council White. Uh, November sixteenth, we had a, a business consortium entity meet with us to talk with the town about the possibility of biofuels and using biofuels in our in our valley. So it's, very embryonic, looking to spruce products in the agriculture community and perhaps Louisiana Pacific are getting raw cellulose to convert to fuel. Completely embryonic. On the 18th, uh, we met with the RCMP myself. I don't know if you made it or not. Did you were tied up that day when we met at the I West? I tied up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Constant Mario, uh, CEO Poole and myself and Stars at Henson prior to going to the a AMM uh, to talk about how we could work together to make things better. And that was pretty rewarding. On the 20th to the 23rd, all of us were at the AMM where we had many, many different uh, conferences to attend. Uh, we met uh, cabinet ministers, MLAs, mayors, Reeves. We did a whole series of networking and lots of seminars on how to make ourselves better as, uh, as uh, counselors within the community. So uh, I felt that was really, really positive. And also working uh, your Worship made it a connection with the other Reeves from the other constituencies and they're now meeting uh, monthly at the moment, so uh, that was a huge uh, thing for me. On November the 24th, we had a Zoom meeting with a justice meeting on community safety. Uh, we're a pilot project, they're looking at protocols, things maybe we could do in our community. On November 29th, we had a meeting with Seahawk where uh, the, it's a group that will evaluate uh, our fire protective systems locally. It can be with all the other constituencies, ways to, uh, are we doing a good job? Can we do a better job? We can always do a better job. And that's an option that we're communicating with the other municipalities and ourselves. On uh, November 30th, we had a Zoom meeting with uh, Minister Pinuk, the Minister of Highways, and MLA Wochuk, and talking about uh, the possibility of the roundabout, where the roundabout is in time, and uh, hopefully they'll be doing another consultation with the consumers, the constituents in our valley. And we also talk about Highway Number 10 and 366 through the Duck Mountains. November 30 is sort of related. Uh, SPL and Swan Valley Outdoors did a, uh, a meeting, and they had uh, we grossed $60,000 in that dinner. We netted 30000 and to date, we have spent over $80,000 in the Swan River Valley. And that's going to increase very quickly because of the uh, 30 more. So if you have projects, pet projects that are outdoors related, environmental related, you can contact me. I'm on that committee. Or Ward Perchuk, we'd uh, like to hear from you. And on December 5th, uh, Swan Valley Sport Fish Met, and it does relate in that they're going back to their dinner. And in the past, we had 600 people join our dinner, and those monies all stay here in the valley also. Then last night we had uh, Min Bo and the Town of Swan River meet, and I uh, wonder a collaborative uh, meeting. Uh, fire was a big deal, uh, how we can uh, look after options within the fire system, but uh, just nice to see Min Bo, most of their council being here, listening and sharing, not always agreeing, uh, why should they? Uh, but collaborating and willing to talk, and hopefully we will meet more often 
with our neighbors, uh, both sides of us and to the north. Because the more we meet, the more we're frank, uh, the better it is. So we're really, really crazy busy lately. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a busy month, as uh, as you all are aware, this year? with committees uh, uh, this in this month. You know, uh, you know, see, there's a lot of our evenings are going to be uh, dedicated to a lot of committee meetings. Uh, for myself, um, I have the Swan Valley Health Facilities meetings. We're trying to line up a, a date here in the next. A uh, week or so in the vet clinic, we were supposed to meet, I think, on Thursday. It's been now deferred again, so uh, sometimes it's a challenge to get all together, um, but uh, we'll get there. Uh, AMM, uh, I thank you all for attending. We had 100% attendance, and uh, everybody took it in as the way they should, and represented the community in a, in a professional way and ask the questions that need to be asked and learn, I believe, whatever you possibly could to absorb. There's lots that uh, you're taking in right now as new counselors and even some of our um, seasoned counselors, we're, we're always learning and, and, uh, and making those connections with uh, either AMM board members or um, ministers and, or deputy ministers. So uh, it's always a, a good learning experience. Um, uh, further to uh, the AMM, I guess I can say that uh, last Tuesday I was uh, um, lucky enough to be elected as the AMM uh, Parkland Director uh, till June. It's a by-election, uh, so I have a short stint there, but uh, I do look forward to serving on the board and uh, bringing the issues forward from our 16 municipalities of, of the Parkland District. And uh, these meetings will be uh, once a month, usually. And it'll include uh, days where we can actually go in to the legislature and lobby uh, to the uh, premier and ministers and also meet with the opposition as well. So I look forward to all that and, and hearing from all of our 16 municipalities of, of the parkland. And I have uh, honestly reached out to each of them already. So I look forward to that and, and other uh, issues that we can bring from our valley too. So, uh, so that we talk a lot about crime and, uh, and healthcare issues. And, and those will be things that I will be advocating hard and uh, speaking with those ministers. On the health front, I can say that we are still um, working with uh, the government on the CT scanner and uh, I met with the uh, MLA last night and uh, we were going to get these uh, uh, resolutions that we had uh, presented to the, uh, the, the, the government I'm thinking about a year and a half ago that all our valley municipalities had agreed on where the monies uh, were going to be coming from uh, and partly with uh, the medical recruitment fund and also with the Swan Valley Health Facilities and also some locally funded monies. So we're still continuing to lobby and uh, and try to get this thing um, shovels in the ground, so to speak, hopefully by springtime. But uh, that's something that we have to really lobby hard. So, and then also was mentioned that my um, relationship with our Reeves of the Valley, I thank you for mentioning that. Uh, it has been very, very warm. And uh, it's 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 actually it's a it's a breath of fresh air to be quite honest with you, and uh, and I look forward to working with them. And quite honestly, I some some of our Reeves I haven't spoke to for a long time, and I feel like I almost talk to them or message them in some way every single day. So uh, it's good. So we're starting off on the right foot, and I really believe that we're going to see some. Uh, better things in, in the days and, and, and years ahead. And then we also talked a little bit about economic development, and that's something that we have felt that uh, is important to the Valley, and each of the Reeves and councils believe the, the same as well. And, uh, and we're moving forward with that, and the committee, I believe, that we had struck uh, together, uh, they will start meeting on tomorrow night, Wednesday evening. So we'll look forward to hearing what that report looks like as well. So being with that, uh, I'm done with my report. I have a question uh, for you. Sure. You mentioned the um, veterinarian meeting, and I think it's here in the CAO's report. Um, mm -hmm. One of the meetings are pertaining to the animal care with regards to the pound services and stuff. I'm just wondering if it would be possible for some of us that are on protective services and 
kind of reviewing that animal control bylaw to maybe be part of that meeting just to kind of it, I don't think it pertains to the board itself that's with more with the vet uh, the vets themselves mm -hmm. the board is not is not the ownership of the uh, of, of the business itself it's of, of the assets of the building and, and so forth that's what the board's rep uh, oh, responsibility that part is. I understand so then when you were referring to a meeting you weren't referring to no. that particular no. meeting okay no. sorry no. My, I misunderstood but definitely that. if you feel like you should maybe meet with that then you can uh, seal pool and and, uh, and make that request yeah because I it's like I said it was in his report as well and that's why I would, okay. maybe that's no. where my yeah when I say what I what, I what I talk about the vet clinic board that's just the board itself okay yeah Perfect. thank you sorry no problem thank you uh, then we'll move on to CAO report so you do see the uh, report from CAO pool um, if there's any questions uh, Mr. Harvey uh, will uh, accept them the best in his ability if not they'll be deferred and mr Poole can respond uh, to you uh, uh when he can so i do have one question if i have yeah um uh, it mentions and now i didn't make note of where it mentions it but there's mention of a sbbc land donation what exactly is that i was just going to quickly scroll through and see if i could locate it for you which one yeah Sorry, I'll have to look through it to see that. Um, I think it was towards the end. Yeah, in the official unfinished business, the very last entry, January, or um, sorry, the second last entry is SVBC land donation through CCNP. It's something that was tabled, but I'm just wondering, what is that pertaining to? I think that's the Swan Valley Business Consortium land donation. So there yeah. was a uh, there was a parcel of land. Uh, I think it was on Fourth Street, and uh, they had discussed with a three or four previous CAOs a go about uh, developing on that land. Um, but a caveat wasn't put on the land, so after three or four CAOs and nothing was developed or wasn't sold and someone offered to purchase that property um, and there was no caveat so it was sold uh, to that other person. So then they were had just discussed some other parcel of land within the town, but uh, nothing was determined. They had a few different spots that they were interested in but they were kind of modifying their building plans based on cost. So like they were looking at, you know, just across the street and seeing if they could get a land grant from CN and a few other spots, but uh, that one was tabled because they're still kind of waiting on their ideal location. And then I believe they were gonna do a presentation to council that, that uh, didn't happen because I think they were kind of changing what exactly they were planning to build. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor White. Yeah, the uh, airport mock disaster exercise scheduled for December 7th. What's that involved? Uh, so that's something with Transport Canada every three years we do one. And uh, so we're gonna have the fire department go out there and uh, the police, and then we're gonna go through our ERP. Um, and just make sure that if there's anything in the ERP <coughs> that doesn't uh, work, then we'll update it. Or if there's things in the ERP that are no longer relevant, we'll update it. You just have to you do a tabletop every two years, and then you do uh, a live one every three, every third year. And uh, or I said every two years for the uh, desktop. For the desktop you do every year. It's every three years for the live. And you just run through it and make sure that it uh, works. So they will actually be doing this on December 7th? Yeah, they'll be heading out there. Uh, that would be just tomorrow. To, that's tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but he knows that. Uh, somehow I think the uh, Protective Service Committee should have been <coughs> I just read that tonight. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I can make a note of that. Yep. Thank you. We can talk about it after. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Borchow. I'm just looking at here for under general 1F um, regarding the budget. So I know we're doing draft budget, I believe, December 13th. Mm -hmm. So then when do we finalize the budget? Because it looks like they're not wanting to do any grant funding applications. It's suspended until we finalize the budget. So if we don't finalize the budget till next June, we're missing out on a lot of potential opportunity. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Harvey, and if Mr. Benito that, wants to respond to. That grant funding is external grants coming to the town. So people wanting uh, grants from the town. Ah. That's the grant funding. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're, we're still like, going to be applying for grants. Good. That's just Thank you. Okay. That clarifies comes. that. I was and, like, hmm. This is us handing money out, I think. Okay. Yes. And just Great. to doubly clarify that, that's one-time grants or grants that people haven't come before. One off. There's certain annual ones that we've historically done, mm -hmm. and you'll see there's one tonight that we've historically done once a year kind of thing. So that way, that's why that one's on the agenda. Okay. But if someone comes and it's not an annual thing and we haven't done it before, and they say, you know, we want to rent the hall for free or we want something for this then those are that's what perfect that clause is referring to okay thank you further discussion all in favor it's carried nine nine point one result the town of swan river receive and approve the 2023 emergency measure plan moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. We have Mr. Linick here with us tonight. And any questions? Or did you want to start with anything yourself? I can provide just kind of an update of the changes. That, that would be perfect. So uh, these changes were made from our 2022 to 2023 plan in consultation with uh, the Municipal Emergencies Coordinator for our area. Um, we had him come up and review our plan and kind of make some suggestions, just myself being new to the position, we wanted a second set of eyes on it, so not a lot was changed. Um, the main revisions were in uh, part one, section 1.2.1. Uh, we made an additional reference. There's some new uh, state of local emergency declaration documents online now. So it's just, uh, you go online and you plug in kind of, it's kind of a choose your own adventure form or fill in what you gotta, why or it's a drop down menu, it prints out the paperwork for you as opposed to having us carry blank copies of it. Uh, then 1.2.2, based on the recommendations, we moved the Emergency Measures Act out of our EMO plan to its own appendix. Just if there's ever any changes, it's a lot easier just to keep changing the appendix than it is to redo our entire act and have to pass it again every time. Okay. Uh, other than that, um, there are some updates to our emergency business continuity plan, uh, just some names, people have come and gone, so we have updated that. And kind of the main updates to our appendixes were our uh, hazard matrix, so matrix being that we look at probably what all, what probably could occur that would cause us to be, it, us to declare a state of local emergency in the town. Based on some recommendations from EMO, we uh, separated out some different weather events into their own, just because it's they can be just present unique challenges um, and then added some in as well uh, with the addition of another bulk fuel station in town we increase some of the probability risk of a fuel fire especially given that those facilities are quite close to each other uh, i was also suggested that uh, for train derailment was uh, one of our other big ones is that it was uh, we have two scenarios one for dangerous goods one for non-dangerous goods because and they can present vastly different hazards. And then lastly, obviously with COVID-19, we hadn't had any in there as far as pandemic or disease outbreaks. So that was in our business continuity plan, but not as a hazard on our hazard matrix. So that has now all been updated. Perfect. Thank you for doing that, uh, Councilor White. Just a comment, I'm not, I'm not sure I privy this train thing that really is uh, something that I'm glad you're talking about. I'm pretty sure there's a heck of a load of bunch of high-end carcinogens 
going into the LP plant, which I'm 100% in favor of, and the carcinogens are manu massaged enough so they don't get back to bite anybody. But if they're on a train and if there was a derailment, I'm not sure what the consequences of some of those, uh, those particular chemicals are. I'd encourage you to put it on your list of things to check on because it'd be nice to be prepared for it if it ever happened. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Boitcha? Um, the train cars going to LP are usually empty. Like they are mm -hmm. empty cars and they load the product up. The product's loaded there and gone out. Paper rolls sometimes come by a train, but I don't think anything else of hazard is transported by a train. I so the chemicals but come home? I, I think it's by truck, Just possibly. By truck? I think, yeah. Like, I don't, like, the train, when it comes, it's usually empty cars getting loaded up. I'll double check. I can double check that, too, yeah. and, and look into it a little bit more, but... It's important to think, and, and, I, and I appreciate you're probably right, but the science world I come from, thinking is not good enough. Yeah. I want to know. I just am with someone who takes CN calls We're all the time, so I know it's you know this guy, Derek, 30 million. Yeah. No, not that one. So if you, know, well, if you could find out, let us yeah, know. Yeah, I will great. ask. I'll figure Thanks so much. Okay. And then I'll email right. you. Have we been introduced to this young man, Your Worship? Uh, I... I believe, uh, I don't know if you all have met uh, Mr. Linick, no. I guess Hi. if no. you want to do some introductions, I guess we could do that. I've met you earlier today, so, but uh, uh, we can start with uh, Councillor Medwood, I guess, and we'll go around and do, uh, do that. Hi, Councillor Medwood. Nice to meet you. I'm Dwayne White, and uh, we've chatted. My door is always open. Hi, I'm Tanya Powell. Nice oh. to meet you. Councillor Tracy Boychuk. I know where your parents live. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, welcome to the team, of course. And uh, and we, we, we do have uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio that's absent tonight and also Councillor Bobbick, but uh, you'll have an opportunity, I'm sure, down the road in a few days or weeks uh, to meet them as well. Very impressed with your presentation, sir. You're thorough, you've obviously done your homework. And I think our team is one of open communication and feel free to disagree with one another and take constructive criticism politely from one another. And uh, you did a good job there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so no further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 9.2. Result of the snow removal agreement with Manitoba Transportation and Infrastructure be signed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded sure. by Councillor Boycha. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. On page two, section 2.01H, the date references March 2021 and also references a section 1.01D, which doesn't actually exist in the document. <laughs> yes, we'll have to so before signing, that's one thing we might want to. I have a, another question, if I may. Go ahead. Um, in this agreement, it's been previously discussed how, uh, well, it shows that what they provide for money is nowhere near what we tend to spend for clearing the roads. So I'm just kind of wondering, since Main Street, where it's being cleared, is predominantly businesses, and even the 4th Street here that is on there mentioned in this uh, agreement, there predominantly businesses. So I'm wondering what exactly do the business taxes go towards and is it possible maybe to be using those business taxes to help fund the snow removal on Main Street since that is kind of primarily servicing them? Is that something we can draw money from to help offset those costs in the budgeting scheme of things? That might be a CFO Ganita question. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the, the, the business tax goes to general, but I guess if, if Mr. Ganita wants to respond to that, it would come out of the same. But uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Ganita, if you'd want, like to. Yes, certainly I'd like to see a discussion on uh, where business taxes should be directed when we have our budget meetings. Okay, fair enough. So, Back to the resolution, um, if if um, 
administration, or a council I should say, is not satisfied with uh, there's some of the errors, does council want to table the mm -hmm. uh, resolution? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, that's coming from Councillor Boychuk mm -hmm. as being seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? So it will be tabled to our next meeting and give MI a chance to um, clarify or fix any of those errors. Okay, thank you. 9.3. Whereas the skateboard union wishes to resurface the town owned Swan River Lions Skate Plaza concrete skate park located at 124 4th Avenue North with a concrete sealer. And whereas the skateboard union has been approved for a grant from the Community Foundation of Swan Valley on the condition that the grant be given to the town. And whereas the town wishes to appoint the skateboard union to undertake the project. Therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the chief financial officer be authorized to sign the agency agreement with the skateboard union attached hereto as Schedule A. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All. Go ahead. I just want to clarify, if I understood what I read, basically what it's saying is the um, Community Foundation it has granted money to the skate park, but they themselves can't accept it, so we're holding it for them. I believe that's the way it's working. And the town itself is not um, responsible for doing the work or paying the work other than to issue those funds back to the skate park to cover any expenses, expenses for it. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure I understood that. Yeah, that's what uh, I've been told. Yeah, is exactly what you described. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 10, 10.1. <clears throat> Whereas the town of Swan River is partly to an agreement to establish the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission dated October the 20th, 2017, and whereas the three other municipal par parties to the agreement have indicated their support for proposed revisions to the agreement, and whereas two of the other municipal parties to the agreement have defeated or tabled resolutions to approve the Airport Commission's 2022 budget and pay the 2022 municipal levy until all municipal, par municipal parties have approved the proposed revisions to the agreement and the municipal levies have been recalculated as specified in the proposed revisions. And whereas the Town of Swan River Council wishes to continue an agreement with the three other municipal parties uh, for the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission, as the airport provides essential services and access to the residents of the Town of Swan River and the Swan River Valley. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Swan River approve the proposed revisions to the agreement to establish the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission as per attached Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? I have a couple questions. For starters, um, what does number five on page two actually mean? Um, I'm maybe having trouble understanding it because of the red mixed with the black, but it's it's kind of not registering for me. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Harvey. Uh, so that's kind of the key one for here. Uh, so it used to be all based on assessment, and uh, then it was proposed that it would be changed to 50% uh, uh, of population, based on population and 50% based on assessment. So what does that 50% population mean? It means that we'll pay more. <coughs> uh, I don't have the exact amount, but uh, the assessments went really high in the farmland because they were buying farmland for, like it went up like five times uh, what it used to go for kind of thing in a, say about five years. Um, and so because their assessment's all 
skyrocketed and the amount they were paying went up and so there's us, Swan Valley West, Mountain and uh, Minnetonas Bozeman that all make up the airport commission and so we're kind of outnumbered on it and so that's why it was proposed to make these changes but every council has to pass this resolution to make the changes and so the other councils want to make this change and in the past we've resisted it because we want to keep it based on assessment because that's historically how it was done. Okay, so um, okay. Well, Council White then I'll come back to you. Sure. No, I'm okay. Oh, you are? Okay. Thank you. So then that 50% population, it's just a flat rate fee per head. So for example, if we have 4,000 rate payers, then 50% is 2,000 and there's a dollar value placed on that or how does that work? Go it's ahead. how it's divided. So if we had two people and they had one person, then we would pay twice what they're paying. So it's based on, it's using the population to divide the uh, net expenditure for it. Mr. Ganita, did you want to uh, um, add anything to that? Because I know that you were very involved also with the airport commission. I mean, yes, uh, there's been a desire to change the funding formula since 2019, and uh, uh, various different methods have been tried to affect those changes. And uh, the end result is each municipal council has to approve the changes because it is an agreement between all four municipalities. And so it, like the airport commission itself is not a legal entity. It's an agreement between four municipal partners. And so each municipality has to agree to revise the, the terms of the agreement and, and the desire to change the way it's funded has been there since uh, 29, early 2019. And so it's, it's been an ongoing process trying to affect the changes that uh, other municipalities uh, have agreed to. Thank you, Councillor Borsha. So what other airport commissions are there out there? I, I know we like we've taken some draft fire commission ones to look at, right? So what do they base their fees on? What, what do you mean like, like other, other, commissions? other air, airport commissions? Yeah. Like you mean outside the valley? Outside the valley. I don't know if I can even answer that. Mr. Ganita, I don't know if it's relevant to this, but... Dolphin, for example. Uh, the, the assistant to the CAO had compiled some uh, information from other municipalities. I, I haven't had a chance to review it in depth. Okay, Councillor White. I believe Dauphin is a hundred percent population. We've we haven't got, we've, we're meeting them halfway. I believe they wanted a hundred percent population, so we went fifty fifty with their hope that we will be eventually become a hundred. And Derek looked into many different communities, and many were a hundred percent. So we're still halfway. Part of the reason for doing that, I believe, is to keep our partners involved in this process because some have. Uh, suggested they're not happy with that and uh, may pull out, for lack of a better term. There had been. So this is kind of similar, if I'm not mistaken here, as us trying to get our numbers based on user numbers. Kind of similar in a way. I mean, you're going population. We could also do our user agreements based on population too and divide it and all that. Like, I don't know. I was kind of looking at all those budgets and the uh, percentage wise, and it kind of goes about 50, 40, 10, or 50, 30, 20 is mm -hmm. the average percentage if you break it up. It's pretty consistent. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if. I don't know. There's significant debate 
who's using the airport the most? Is it the, air, the crop sprayers for the agricultural people, for the community, or is all the other uses for the community itself? So it's at least debatable who's using it most. Ah, uh, yeah. And Council White has been on the airport commission for a number of years too. It's Council hard to quantify. Mm -hmm. um, Derek had his hand up. Uh, no, uh, Council right. Medwood and then uh, Mr. Harvey. With reading the resolutions that were kind of below this, it's my understanding that Minnetonas Bozeman has defeated it, so are they not wanting to be part of the airport commission? If the, if the change doesn't come, then they don't want to be a part of it. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that. And the other one that I was reading, Swan Valley West, tabled there, so I didn't see anything in our notes that indicated that that's changed so theirs is just pending or yeah we don't know what their councils are doing because the motion came from Swan Valley West I guess my my where I'm going for with this question is in regards to shared services well not so much shared services but if part of the reason we have the airport well, in a way, it is kind of for shared services because if we're using it for medical transport and that's the way Manitoba is starting to go, then how does that look for any patients or people that need to be transported that are not part of the airport commission? Like, how, how does that work for flights coming in and whatnot for those? Because to me, I'm kind of thinking if we have an airport and this is one of the uses, it may not be the main use, but if it's being used for medical transport and things like that, obviously we want everybody to have access to it, but then also shouldn't be people be helping to make this a feasible thing for our town or community to have, because if we're not all pitching in and we don't have an airport, then we also don't have the access to medical transport. So in a way, to me, it's a bit like an insurance. So. I'm not necessarily opposed to these changes because to me I don't know what the numbers look like one way or the other from what it used to be and what it will become to, to know but uh, Councillor White brought up a valid point too like a lot of farmers are going to air spray for crops so that's certainly not town residents that are using the airport for those services and I know Minnetonas Bozeman is a very big area so I, I just, I'm not really sure where the big picture is going with this and if this is potentially going to be another. Um, well, the, 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 the airport commission has had some, some, uh, some challenges, I guess we can say, for a number of years on how the levy is decided upon and, and what calculations that they use. Um, the uh, watershed uses a different calculation of how they levy as well. So, but right now what we're talking about is the airport commission and and uh, and how they have or how we're all talking about uh, how this levy will work. And uh, Swan Valley West wanted to see that change. Uh, one of their members, or maybe a couple of their members, wanted to see a change to be the 50-50. And uh, I think they want to have it higher, did they not? Okay. And so this was kind of like a compromise, more or less. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on uh, Councillor White's point. So, my understanding is they were saying, well, the airport is people, so that's why it should be based on population because it's people flying in, people flying out. And then during the debate, our point was there's definitely that aspect of it. But, uh, and that's why they're saying it shouldn't be assessment because if the fire line goes up, that's not. Uh, any additional people, but then we made the point of well, there's a lot of spring that happens out of there, and none of that spring happens in town. That's all to do with assessment. So I think that's part of the 50 50 was recognizing right. that yes, a lot of it is people for medical, which makes sense for population, but then there's a lot of spring where it makes sense for assessment. Okay, uh, Mr. Gadida. The question was asked, uh, what are other parts of the province doing uh, their, their research that was done uh, 
dolphin saving the municipalities cover the shortfall each year, and that is based on population. And shortfall means the excess of expenses over other revenues, provincial grant, tenant revenue from land leases, use of airport fees, et cetera. And so the municipalities cover the shortfall based on population. Town of Altona and municipality of Ryland share equally in the airport operations budget a small budget, so we split it 50-50 instead of heckling over the share. And uh, the PAR said they're the only, the town of the PAR is the only one that funds their airport. They're, they're not together with any other municipalities. So that's the only three other airports that responded. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Boychuk. So what does this change our contribution to this then? Like, do we know like a percentage? You want to know the number? Yeah, like what's the total? That was going to be my question yeah. too. Okay. What is potentially the number going to look like with this new agreement? Okay, so I'll just let uh, Mr. Ganina respond to that then. I don't have that answer to that question uh, because this is the... Uh, this proposed change is portioned assessment, and unfortunately, portioned assessments are provided only to the municipality. And like I, I have total assessments for all the municipalities throughout the province, those are provided to every municipality, but the portion assessment is provided only to each municipality. So I have asked the CAOs of the four municipalities to provide their portion of assessments and uh, obviously I have access to the town of Swan Rivers. I know what the town of Swan Rivers portion of assessment is and only one other municipality with the DCAO has responded so far. So until I get the portion of assessments from the other two municipalities that I can't say what the exact effect will be. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vida. Um, uh, we just have uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio joining us by Zoom. Uh, welcome to the meeting. We're just in uh, on the resolution on 10.1 on the revisions to the Airport Commission. Uh, there has been some discussion, debate. Um, uh, my comment just before I go to the, to the next uh, uh, councillors is that if you feel that there's not enough information to vote, uh, then you have the option to table this because it sounds like that you're asked that's what you're asking for or we vote on it and you decide to either pass it or defeat it go ahead councillor Mocha. um the other thing i have do we not have statistics or anything information on the usage of this airport like to me like we're not running public flights in and out of there i'm thinking it's predominantly used for our agriculture <coughs> Like, is there is there numbers, stats, like how many medevacs are there versus how many agriculture planes fly out of there? Because I think we need to get some more information. So I'm moving to table this. Okay. I would tend to agree because the other thing I'm thinking is forest fires, and we have the bomber planes that uh, use the airport as well. So who all is using the airport and for what purposes or reasons? Okay. Just raise your hand. Um, Councillor Ganita. Uh, we we have no statistics See, on and no ability at present to measure the flights coming in and out of the airport. The, the only statistics that, that I have are uh, who buys fuel from the airport commission and the, 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 the spray planes are like less than 15% of the total fuel purchases. So there's fuel purchases from private pleasure flyers, there's fuel purchases from private business flyers, there's fuel purchases from government, uh, medical planes, uh, firefighting planes, there's a broad spectrum of fuel that's purchased from the airport, but uh, I don't know how applicable that would be to determining how many flights are in and out to the airport. <laughs> That's probably the only thing we have to base usage off of. Yeah. 
So um, we have a, a motion to uh, a, a table, so that usually ends the debate. So the motion was made by Councillor Boychuk and it was seconded by Councillor Medwood. Mm -hmm. All in favor? So it's tabled. That ends the discussion on that. So that should probably go to maybe a cow meeting if we can, mm -hmm. and and see what other. If those councillors are looking for more information, maybe you should just uh, gather those and uh, and pass them on to Sao uh, Pool. Eleven eleven point one. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29639 to 29707, totaling $511,139.20 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5215 to number 5222, totaling $99,146.05 on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $815 as listed on Schedule C, and direct deposits totaling $1,475.88 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a question. The two bottom entries on the um, check explanation report. They indicate they're for property tax incentive program payment. I'm just wondering, what is that program? Mr. Gadida? Uh, yes, the town has a incentives program for new construction for commercial, residential uh, information all on the town website. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? I'm not sure I understand. Like, we're giving them a break on their taxes? Yeah, when they build new business or residential, if they're doing a new build or I think also a, a very large renovation, then they would, there's an incentive that they would receive a certain amount of dollars back or, or a rebate off their uh, taxes uh, okay. for, for a certain amount of time. I can't remember all the details, but that's what the incentive plan is. Oh, oh, three. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? Councillor Boychuk. This is just something off the cuff here. So the Amazon Marketplace stuff, all this, is there not somewhere locally we could be purchasing this stuff for and supporting our local business than Amazon? I think that we just look for the lowest price, but... Council will want us to they're not they're not in Swan River though. Yeah. I I'd rather pay more and support local than Yeah. You I, wouldn't? Well yeah. for sure I would, I, but we can't. I, I brought up the, the same item. Oh Go did ahead. you can? Yeah. Oh. Well to piggyback on that, because I was kind of thinking the same thing. Um, are these not items we would have to tender out for? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, we don't tender every purchase that we make then my my thoughts are if it's not something that qualifies for tendering then why aren't we supporting our local businesses uh, i guess that would be a, a challenge or a, a challenge from council to administration to uh to spread that to make sure that they're spending as much as they possibly can within the town of swan river council white and this has been given since day one for the last 25 years that we always buy local of course we support local However, I'm not sure what the dollar figure is, Mr. Harvey, but there's a certain number in there where we cannot, we are forced by law to look elsewhere. We can find a truck in Swan River for 10 grand. If it's 8 grand in Brandon, by law, we have to buy it where we can get the Yeah, that's part of the and the, and the New West Trading par uh, Partnership. Pardon? The New West Trade uh, Partnership. So we, we may want to buy it locally. I mean, we're talking kitchen towels and cleaning rags. I'm sure if we yeah. approached Ace or Home Hardware or somebody and said, we have this price on here, would you match it so we can buy it locally? We have to be responsible to the councillor and our taxpayers, and we'd like to keep it local, yada, yada, yada. I think we'd easily, like, trash bags, cleaning and buffing pads. Like, these are not trucks by any means. Go ahead. Yeah, and I can check with uh, the other department heads on that. Like, I'm not sure the quantity that they're ordering kind of thing, mm -hmm. but definitely if there's opportunity to mm -hmm. buy a little plug and pass that along. Yeah, I know there's, yeah, there's some on Amazon. 
uh, that I've worked, but it's more of like specialty mm -hmm. tools kind of thing. But uh, I can pass that on to the department heads. And there's also the AMM Trading Company as well, mm -hmm. where it purchases where we get rebated back mm -hmm. as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've heard about That's that, but good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good Further point. discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 11.2 result at the annual grant for four, of $4,000 to the Swan Valley Historical Museum included in the 2022 financial plan be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, so this is one of those yeah, annual grants. Yeah, I just thought we were not doing that not right a, now. So this one isn't a one-off, that's why this one's That one's okay, on. okay. You. Okay. Um, all in favor? It's carried. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just writing down a note from the previous one. Could I get the mover and seconder for that one? Uh, on the accounts? Uh, uh, no, sorry, on the, uh, the annual grant. Oh, uh, that sorry. was uh, Medwood and Powell? Thank you. Yeah, it works. It was on, it was on this side. Yeah, so. it was on yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we're at 11.3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, being, be it resolved, that the assessment alterations made by the Manitoba Assessment Services on November the 14th and December the 1st be made to the 2022 property tax roll with the resulting increase totaling $972.31 and resulting decreases totaling $324. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor White, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.4. Result that the uh, that $50,000 contribution budgeted in the 2022 financial plan be made from the Utility Operating Fund to the Lagoon Improvement Reserve Fund. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Um, am I correct in understanding that basically we're moving $50,000 from the operating fund to the reserve fund for the lagoon? Okay. Discuss any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And it just requires um, a resolution to do that. Yeah, no, I just wanted to make sure I was understanding it. Okay. 11.5, <clears throat> my gosh, there's been a lot of reading tonight. Uh, whereas sections 3652 of the Municipal Act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which properties, the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year may be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. Be it resolved that the designated year for which properties in arrears be offered for sale by auction be 2022, meaning all properties with outstanding taxes from the year 2021 or prior. And be it further resolved that in accordance with sections 3631 of the Municipal Act, costs shall be the actual costs incurred for each parcel listed for the 2023 tax sale plus an administration fee of $50 as set forth in the Manitoba Regulation 5097. And be it further resolved that the 2023 tax sale be held Wednesday, September the 13th, 2023 at 2 p.m. in the Town of Swan River Council Chambers and the tax service will be hired to manage the tax sale for the town during the fiscal year 2023. Moved by Councillor uh, Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. 
Um, what exactly does this all mean? Is it just meaning that anybody, how, how far in arrears does somebody have to be with their property taxes before it hits this um, auction block, so to speak? Go ahead, three. Three years. Three years, okay. Yeah, and then, uh, and then it's to hire tax service to handle it because they do it for many municipalities <coughs> and there's certain notifications that need to be done. And uh, so just to hire them to do it because then they make sure that all the boxes are checked off before we take someone's property itself. Okay, thank you. That's good. And, uh, and if that uh, owner of the property paid the property taxes the day before the auction, then it doesn't go to the auction. So that's how it kind of works. Okay, so basically they have right up until the day before auction to pretty much, yeah. Pay in full. Okay. So for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 11.6. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252.1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $5,700.12. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed in Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in the manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective January the 1st, 2023. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Wojciak. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Um, my apologies, uh, Mr. Linick, but if if you don't want to stay any longer, you uh, you can leave. But if you want to stay, it's up to you. I'm fine to stay. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Twelve point one. Resolved that bylaw twenty two two thousand and twenty two, being a bylaw describing the town of Swan River council procedures, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, I'm thinking there might be a couple typos. I don't know if we can quickly correct those before the passing vote goes. Um, in section 10.1, we have a rogue period, I think. The last line on the page and moving forward onto the next page, the uh, where it says the topic and scope period of the presentation. I'm thinking that's all meant to be one. Yeah, those sentence. those could be corrected. Yeah, we can yeah. correct that. If you note that, we can correct that. That's just a grammar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Council White. Just a uh, thought. I know you've been working on it, sir, but to uh, see what's happening with the youth that we're. I am still waiting for an update from them. Okay. I had spoke with the uh, marketing director there and uh, yeah. I have not heard it back yet on a candidate, but thanks. Further discussion? This is a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. 12.2. Resolved that bylaw 23, 2022, being a bylaw to establish the organizational structure for the municipality, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Again, this is uh, third and it will be a recorded vote. Are you ready? Uh, sorry, just two seconds. Just okay. catching up from the last one. Okay, sorry. Not quite as quick as Derek. <coughs> uh, okay. Okay. All in favor? There is a grammar thing too on this one. And 3.3, .3. Yeah, it's missing the colon at the end there. Okay, I'll get that corrected. Okay, thank you. 
All in favor? It's carried. I'll give you a minute. Thank you. Oh, well, actually, we're, we're done this part of it anyway, so. 14, resolved at the pursuits of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we do have uh, items to discuss of the Aquatic Center, uh, the legal team of DD West, uh, their airport land offer. I believe that we have a personnel item as well. So, uh, move by. Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We're in camera. We're out of camera. And we're recording. Okay, we're recording. Uh, items arising out of camera. Councillor or Deputy Mayor uh, Morio. Okay, I would like to make a motion that uh, Council proceed with the uh, metallurgic study as proposed by uh, our Council, DD West, uh, with test labs. Or something to that effect, okay, make so, it words. So we'll wait for the resolution to be uh, typed up. Sounds good. Okay, I'll update. All second. Okay, so if everyone refreshes, it should be there. Where is it going to be sitting in 16? Items arising with the camera. Uh, yes, 16. Yeah, okay. Resolve that. Town Swanner would proceed with the met. How do you say the word? Metallurgical. Metallurgical study at the Wellness Center proposed by Test Labs for the amount of $52,655. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bo uh, Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 17. Result of this regular meeting of Council will be adjourned at. 10 p.m. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you. Stay warm.